I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay, so number line negative two over three. Is this including negative two over three? Can it be equal to negative two over three? No, so we use a round or an open round circle, or an open circle, an open dot. And it's, it's saying that it must be greater than, right? So we're going to put our arrows here to the right. Let's say all three formats. So this is inequality notation, guys. I'm just going to remind you of the different notations that we have. In equality notation. So if you're asking for inequality notation, then you need to leave your answer in that form. This is a number line. Okay. And then what's the third format, guys? So all those brackets, interval notation. So you're going to say X is an element of. So guys, when you're using interval notation, you always have to put the smallest value first and then the biggest value last. All right, it's like it's a numerical order. So this is saying X must be bigger than negative two over three. So what's the smallest value here? Does X have to be bigger than negative two over three? Negative two over three is the smallest value, right? Because it can't be equal to that value, we need to use a round bracket. So you put your negative two over three there. And what is the greatest value now? Okay, there is no greater, there is no upper bound related. So it could go to infinity. We use a round bracket for infinity because it's not actually a number. It's actually going to be equal to infinity, all right? Because if you get to 10 billion and three, you can always go up to 10 billion and four, all right? There's always a bigger number. You're never actually going to reach infinity. It's more of a concept. Right? Who's saying that? Yes. Swapping the sign around, so explaining why. Yeah. Okay. If you have something like, do we agree that two is smaller than three? Yes. Okay. Two is smaller than three. Hey? What if I do this? If I divide three by negative one, is negative two still smaller than negative three? Yes. Negative two is now actually greater than negative three. But when you change the size, when you change the size of the numbers, they actually change which one is bigger. What does that make sense? We did watch the book where it said, you know, when you put it on, when you can't divide by negative. Yeah, only by negative one. Yes, only by negative number, guys. That's the only time that you're going to swap. If you're dividing by two, you don't swap the same. Okay, but if you're dividing by negative two, then you do. Okay, so it comes back to this concept. Yes. I think it's on the classroom already, on the grade one. Yeah. Yes, but it's all the classroom day. Yes. We're going to get one for eight. Yes, yeah, okay. Okay, number two. Two x minus three over two is greater than or equal to three times x plus one. Okay, now you can do various things here first, yes? I'm sorry, I'm going to do another line. Is that to you? Okay, I'm okay. just deciding. Is that to you? I'm just deciding to times by two first, but you could have multiplied the three first. Is that to you? Mm. 
Rachel, I deserve an award for staying on track when you guys are trying so hard <laughs> to get me off the track. Jeepers. Okay, now we need to get all the X's on the one side. What's 2X minus 6X? Oh, negative 4X. What is 6 plus 3? 9. Now I'm going to divide by negative 4, right? So now I need to swap the sign. So x is going to be smaller than or equal to negative 9 over 4. And that's really as complicated as it gets. Obviously, we also get the ones that have two values, all right? So we'll do that next. That's number 3 and 4. But in terms of calculating values, it's exactly the same as calculating or solving an equation, just as soon as or whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, change the sign. Okay, inequality notation is done. Interval notation is going to say x is an element of, now guys, this is saying smaller than or equal to negative 9 over 4. So what is the smallest value going to be now? Yes. Negative infinity. Again, we use a round bracket for that, please. And then the biggest value is going to be negative 9 over 4. Round or square bracket? Square. Square. Good. Thank you. Because it can be equal to that. Like for your number line, you're going to draw your line. You're going to have your negative 9 over 4. Now, since it can be equal to the time on, you're going to use a colored in or a fold in dot. And you're going to. So it can be equal oh, to negative nine over four. It's included, yeah. And then you draw your little arrow going to the left. Yes. It is a lot of not a really complex question, but can we have squared brackets on both sides? How would it, if it's how would that work? If you have um it doesn't happen in the next example. I'll show is you. It, is it it says like two, it says three though. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm going to number three. Number three, negative one, smaller than x minus three, smaller than five. So if, Maxine, if these two were both included, then you would have to change that. Okay, so now, guys, we are basically in this one inequality we're actually solving two inequalities at the same time so if you wanted to don't do this because it's extra work but what this is actually saying is that x minus three is greater than negative one right if you read it from the inside out that is what this is actually saying x minus three has to be greater than right negative one but at the same time x minus 3 has to be smaller than 5. Right? You could, if you wanted to, flip this question up into two separate inequalities. Now, if I wanted to solve for x here, what would I do with the minus 3? Plus 3 on the other side. Wouldn't I do the same thing here? Mm -hmm. I would also plus 3 there. Guys, that's why when you're working out, you're doing the same thing. You've got to find. You add in three on this side and you add in three on that side, yes? If for some reason you want to edit the negative one, you want to edit minus one and negative one, what would happen there? I'm not sure what you ask me. So you want to edit the negative one. So I'm explaining it when there's a part. We don't work with inequalities, we can't fix that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, we're not going to. I'm just wondering. I know if you edit the x, it ends with x minus 3, so add in 3 to x minus 3, you get rid of mm -hmm. 3. Mm -hmm. Add 3 to both ends of 12. If I were to add that, that's very possible. If you were to add yeah. 1 there, add 1. 2 there, and 2 there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you do, here you have to do 3 and all the mm -hmm. things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, does that make sense? Okay, that's fine. So the negative three, you add to both sides. Okay? Then let's see. This is going to say x is an element of two to eight. Guys, when you're reading this, this is essentially saying, let's read from the inside out quickly. It's saying that x is greater than two 
But at the same time, this is an all one inequality, x also has to be smaller than eight. So for a number to be greater than two, but smaller than eight, it lies in between those two numbers. All right, I'm going to say that again. So we think of a number that's greater than two, but smaller than eight. Three, four, five, five and a half. All right, there's a whole bunch of things. So x has to be any number greater than two, smaller than eight. So in between two and eight, potentially. All right. So that is how you can read it here. X is an element of two to eight. So X is any number between two and eight. Either I'm using square and square, not square round brackets, because X can't be equal to two or to eight. All right, those two values are excluded from my actual producer. X can be two comma zero zero one, right? So it can't be two. Okay, it can be anything bigger than two, but smaller than eight. Okay, for the number line, very simple, you're just going to have these two numbers. You don't have to worry about any other numbers on the number line. Okay, you can assume that I know that there are no other numbers there, so that's fine. Round, no, I keep saying round. Because <laughs> I'm thinking about round brackets. Open and dot above the two and above the eight. And to show that it's any value in between, we draw a line. Okay, last one. Sorry, what is happening? Okay, number four. Oh, oh dear, <laughs> do you understand what I mean? <laughs> oh no, I didn't say which of your answers, just a question. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we are again solving for x. The important thing to note here, though, is that x is negative. So we are in our final step and I have to think about swapping signs. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. This 4, when I move it up, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So what's negative 3 minus 4? Negative 7. Negative 7. I'm left with a negative x in between there. What is 10 minus 4? 6. Now I need to divide both sides and actually the negative x as well, right? By negative 1. So this is going to become 7. This smaller than symbol needs to change to the greater than. My negative x becomes positive x, and this smaller than or equal to needs to become greater than or equal to, and then negative 6. But you can't leave your answer like this. Your smallest value is supposed to be on the left. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this inequality and literally just whoop, swap the whole thing around. Okay? So therefore, negative 6. I literally knew that someone was going to ask that, and I almost said, don't ask me. You don't have to write the day for no, no, You don't have to. <clears throat> I just like making a distinction between this is my answer, but now I'm writing it. Okay. Right, because this negative six is first, now that symbol also needs to swap, okay? That one as well. So you just do that. So the whole thing swaps all. We need to make sure that when we read it from the inside out in our final answer, it's the same as in the previous line. So let's just take a look. This is saying x is smaller than 7. Do so I still have that? x is smaller than 7. This is saying x has to be greater than or equal to negative 6. This is still saying x is greater than or equal to negative 6. Okay, you do have to check that first. Let's write our interval notation. X is an element of square brackets for negative 6 because it can be equal to negative 6. So negative 6 is included in my set of solutions. 7 is going to have a round bracket because 7 is not included in my solution. Okay. Then you have your number line. <laughs> Negative six and seven. Negative six is a possible solution. It is included. Seven is not. Yes. <laughs> there we go. That is the final answer.
How are we feeling? Are we understanding? Not good. Why? I thought I understood. I explained that so well. It's a bit of a knock to my confidence. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You're explaining very well. You're just saying. <laughs> okay, guys, words up. No, 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 we were made to rewrite the entire word song, and then they gave us like echo or word song. Hey, Okay, guys, I would love for you to read through those seven points that are very kindly printed for you instead of expecting you to copy them down. We are going to go through them just now. I'm just I'm just going to copy something down quickly, which you don't have to because it's printed there for you. Okay, read. Sorry, guys, it's not um, very clear up there. It's not focusing more, but you do have it in front of you, so you should be fine. Oh, I actually have an A4 version. Put that up, that's better. 
and zoom out again. Okay, read through the whole question carefully. I think that's quite obvious, right? Don't try to attempt the question before you've actually read through the whole thing. You definitely need to identify what they're actually asking you for, right? Because that is very important. If we're looking at point two, for the thing you are asked to find, x. All right, so thing is a weird word to use there. But the variable, the quantity, um, the speed, or the, the number, or whatever they ask you to find, that you will call x. Sometimes they ask you to find two things, all right? Then you can decide, are you going to call it x and y? In which case, you're going to have to do some more equations, right? If you are introducing two variables, how do you solve two variables by using simple pain to say But sometimes they give you kind of a relationship between the two, two things. So they'll say, for example, um, what can I think of now? The length of a field is double the breadth, right? So then you can say, okay, the breadth is x and the length is then 2x. That kind of thing. Instead of saying length is x and breadth is y. All right. So if you're giving you some kind of relationship between the two things that you ask to find, you can express them using one variable. Okay, that will just make it a bit easier for you. You want to use more things equations. Um, so let's highlight that here. Um you are asked to find x. So if you want to use two variables, you will need two equations to solve simultaneously. Use a diagram or table, guys, that is very useful if you actually use a diagram or table instead of writing like sentences to try and make sense of what's going on. A diagram or table is very useful, especially when you are doing the distance time question. Mm -hmm. I'm adding that there. I always use a table when I am answering a speed distance time question. It makes it much clearer to see what you're actually comparing and to set up your equation. So I can definitely recommend that. For number four, guys, you are going to have to set up an equation in order to solve a word problem. And in order to set up an equation, you need to see what relationship they're talking about. Okay, so we are going to look at the examples now. But that is very important. Establish the relationship because that relationship you are going to write as an equation. Then, obviously, solve the equation, right? That's what we're going to have to do. Once we have our equation, we're going to solve our equation and then interpret the answer. You have to always answer what they're actually asking, guys. So sometimes they, sometimes you just solve for x and you think that's done. All right, but maybe you need to use your x value to calculate something else. So you need to look at what they're actually asking and write your answer down. You need to make sure that you're actually answering the question. And guys, because a word problem, a word sum is a type of equation that you're solving, you can always check, right? If you think you're getting a fun answer, it doesn't look like it could be correct, you can always substitute it back into the original scenario that they've given to check. Okay, if you have time for that in the future exam, often I know there isn't enough time, but it's a nice way of checking your answer. Okay, example one. Now, this sounds very complicated, so maybe you need to read it through a couple of times. A two digit number is seven times the sum of its digits. Thank you. And is 27 more than the number formed by reversing its digits? Find the number. All right, so they have given you a hint, guys. Unfortunately, in a case, for example, we will not be giving you this hint. All right, so I want you to please write example one, and then we are going to write this down as a note under example one. That's why this example is given. You are going to be Expected to know that, all right. If they're talking about the two digit number and they're talking about the digits of that number, you need to be able to work with it. So I'm just going to write it down here on my notes as well. Um, let's do it in blue. The number with, and I'll explain what it means now. Don't stress. 
a number with digits x and y can be written as 10x plus y, but not x, y. <clears throat> now, guys, they talking about a two-digit number. Just give me any example of a two-digit number. 42. I don't want to use the same, sorry. Oh, just say any example. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use the same number. Okay, let's go with, with 54. No, it's just that both of them are two. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's go with 54. Okay, so I'm going to say here, for example, 54. Guys, are we all in agreement that 54 is a two-digit number? Right? Now, 54, wait, let me rather do it like this. Five is what we call the tens digit. You might have done questions like this in grade nine. Does it sound familiar when I say tens digit? Yeah. Right? Some of you might have, it depends on what class you were in. So, five is the tens digit, and four is the one digit? Units. Units digit. As I was writing, I was like, that doesn't sound right. The unit. The unit's digit. I'll blame it on my Afrikaans gene. All right. So five is the tens digit and four is the unit digit. Now, guys, if they're asking us to find the number, and it's a two digit number that they're asking us to find, we need to find the value of the tens digit and we need to find the value of the unit digit. Now, if I want to, I can rewrite to people, and you never would do this because it's, I mean, you don't need to, but I just want to explain this 10x plus y. I can rewrite 54 as 10 times the 10 digit plus 1 times the unit digit. So this is 10 times 10 digit, and this is 1 times unit. Can we agree that 10 times 5 plus 1 times 4 is 54? Mm -hmm. The same number. It's just a very Strange way of writing the number, but since we're talking about digits, okay, we need to understand that we can write a two-digit number. A two-digit number will always have a tens digit and a unit digit. The tens digit is the number that you must multiply by ten. Right, that's why it's called the tens digit. The unit digit is the number that you must multiply by one. A unit is one, right? And then when you add those two together, that will give you the actual two-digit number. Okay, so that is where the 10x plus y comes from. So you can say in your let x and y equal thing, you can say let x equal the tens digit and y equal the unit unit digit. All right, then you can express that number as 10x plus y. Okay, it's something quite strange. Like I said, you never would write a number like this, but unfortunately we have to work with this in this question. So now we're really talking about digits instead of numbers, or maybe digits compared to numbers. Okay, if you have a tens digit and a unit digit, if they were talking about a three-digit number, what would the first number be? Hundred digit. Suppose that's what you would All right. So then you would say a hundred times that number plus ten times the tens digit plus one times unit digit. That would give you the whole number. Okay. So that makes work at this. I'm going to say let x equal my tens digit. And y equal my unit digit. <clears throat> now that's could I express the tens and the unit digit in terms of one variable? Did they give me some kind of relationship between the two? If we read through the question again, 
We're not actually saying anything like the unit's digit is two times the same digit or something like that. Okay, so we can't actually use the same variable to represent both of them. So we are forced to introduce two variables. So if X is the tenth digit and Y is the unit's digit, therefore the number that we are looking for, the number is 10X plus Y. To get the value of that number, if you're looking at 54, you have to multiply the, the tens digit, which is just, just be five by 10. So this five is not actually five, it's 50. Okay, so that's why we multiply that digit by 10 with the value of the number. Okay, now guys, what are they telling us about this scenario? They say a two digit number is seven times the sum of its digits. Yes, there we go. So the number that we have, what did we say? What is our two-digit number? It's 10x plus y, right? Is or equal to seven times the sum of its digits. Do we agree with that? Okay, so that is going to be one equation. So let's write that. 10x plus y is seven times x plus y. Maybe if you want to, you can highlight that section, that sentence, and then highlight this equation in the same color. If you want to, so let's do that. So it's saying here, seven times the sum of its digits. All right, so that section there, that part of that sentence is giving us this equation. Guys, if we're solving for two variables, we need two equations. Okay, that's how can I make this equation work? If I'm solving that equation, can I solve for x or y? And I have x and y, so okay, I can't solve two variables in just one equation. So we definitely are going to have to set up a second equation. So for the second equation, I'm going to write and, and you can write them underneath each other if you want to, but I like writing them next to each other. Let's look at the second piece of information. They're also saying that this two-digit number is 27 more than the number formed by reversing its digits. Oh, well, that's a handful. Let's just quickly talk about this reversing its digits thing. If our number is 10x plus y, right? That means the number is our digits, our x and our y next to each other. What's going to happen if I reverse it? What is my new 10s digit? It's going to be y, right? So when I reverse those digits, I'm going to have 10y plus x. Okay, so reversing its, its digits is going to be 10y plus x. So it's like I had 54, now I have 45, right? When I reverse those digits. Okay, so now you would have to say 10 times 4 plus 1 times 5. Okay, when you reverse it. So let's just see again quickly. They're saying this number is 27 more than this number that's formed. So how am I going to express that in any kind of manual? Ten x plus y. So our number, yeah. right? That we start okay. with. Sorry, so that's the reverse one. Okay, oh. so they're saying this one is 27 more than this one. And then, how do I express the 27 more than plus 27? There we go. So, guys, you really need to read very carefully. All right, because yeah, there's a lot going on and it's a lot of words and it's. It can become very confusing quite easily. When you look at that spot, it will be like the number that's changing the answer. Like, um, with the 10x plus y, the number that's changing. Yeah, so at the end, we're going to get our x and y values and then work out what I'm saying. You don't do this like y plus 10. Oh, you can if you want. But, uh, the way I. I, I just might 
Guys, I want to give you a hint, which is maybe, I don't know, you might have already started, but do we know that all that should be played? Yeah. 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 Not always, just not always. <laughs> just always. No, 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 not always. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
As long as you get it in x equals six and y equals three, that's fine. actually write what the number is, right? The question was saying, find the number. So our number was 10x plus y. So x value is 6. So 10 times 6 is 60, right? Plus y plus 3. 60 plus 3 is 63. Okay, so that is the number. And guys, now you can check whether that works. So let's just quickly go over what they said. Our number is 63, right? So they're saying a two-digit number is seven times the sum of its digits. Okay, so the sum of the digits, what's six plus three? Nine. Nine. What's seven times nine? Sixty-three. And that is the two digit number, right? Okay, so it does work for that one. You can check that one as well. The other um what's it called? Condition. All right, so that's how you can check, right? Whether your answer actually makes sense by putting it back into basically the word sum and seeing whether it works. I'm going to give you numbers two and three. Oh, no, that one. Yes. You are looking at two and three, though. You got Numbers two and three, guys, they already have the tables there for you. So please fill in those tables and then try and use the relationships that have been stated. Thank you. You don't need to pack away so aggressively while I'm speaking. You are going to pull in your table and then see if you can use the relationship that they've described to set up an equation. Solve for x in number two and in number three. That is your homework for tomorrow, guys. There are still 11 minutes. You can get going on that. I don't know. I just went so Thank you. 
So that is where I was saying, and for instance, I wanted to make sure that I don't want to So you won't get a type of question like that in a case, for example, because that was that was like a problem solving kind of thing. So we are going to talk about proof that question when we get to geometry. Perfect. And what was the total amount of years raised? 
If you only have one variable, you only need one equation. What do you think? Two hundred X and then what else?